Hello and welcome to the Orchid Saga. My name is Ilkian Biersma, also known as EJ, to make it a little bit more simpler for a lot of people. Uh, but yeah, you guys, today, finally I'm going to make the video. This is a video I'm basically working on for a year or a year and a half, because I'm going to discuss a product uh, that I really, really love uh, working with because it helps me to get rid of the thrips. So yeah, that and it did take some time because first of all, if I'm going to mention something as this, as a product on my channel, I really want to know what I'm talking about. And this product is working. And you know what? I have it in action on camera. So there was a, a, a dull trip and I did give it a little bit of this product and uh, we will see the results of that. So that's upcoming. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about thrips because I have them quite often and even now, it's now uh, in December, so we are in winter here, I still have some thrips. Probably because I have quite a lot of plants, so they have more areas to survive uh, my treatments and that's okay. I'm not afraid of pests anymore. I know I have a lot of orchids, so I need to be on top of them and there's always some pest, some sort lurking somewhere. Uh, spider mites on my Meltoniopsis, for example, mealybugs, uh, um, and we have the scale, of course, but I don't have these infestations. I should knock on wood, but uh, because I'm on top of it, and that's the first biggest tip I can give you is to be on top of things. Watch your plants and just create a general idea of what you might expect when you have pests and I will cover the signs. I think the signs of thrips in this case are very important because first of all you need to know what kind of type of pest you're uh, dealing with or at least what to expect of pests. So uh, that's, that's something we're going to talk about. But first of all I just wanted to mention that years ago <laughs> when I started to uh, joining Facebook groups of orchids which I love, don't get me wrong, you can get really good advices but I did start post about thrips because I had thrips on my plants on especially I saw them on uh, for example on yellow flowers because the adult thrips are uh, black and you can really see them very clearly because uh, the, of the color so the black stands out very much on yellow so I took some pictures and posted on it on the Facebook group well I think about half maybe more of half of the advices that I did get was to cut all of my flower spikes just to take the scissors and cut them off just like this and cut them off and cut them off and yes all of them even the ones that weren't affected with thrips i should take them off to get rid of the thrips hopefully so i'm, I'm not sure if you uh, saw maybe a few of my blooming updates but i'm most of the times very lucky with the amount of flower spikes that i that i have I have a lot of orchids, so you may expect quite some, some flower spikes, but anyhow, imagine me going around with, uh, I have the scissors, scissors nearby, with my scissors and cutting off all the flower spikes. I mean, seriously, it, it even hurts talking about it. So yeah, I said, well, thank you for the advice, but it, that is definitely something I will not do. Even if I cannot save the plant, even if I cannot save the spike, the buds, I will not cut them off. There must be a solution. And they said, well, it's your own risk and you probably will lose the battle and uh, etc. I said, I'll take my chances and we will see how far we can, uh, can take this. But I think um, I, I used my uh, oil spray in between, I should mention. So I kind of get rid of uh, the thrips. But if you use an oil-based solution on your blooms and on your buds, they will die off within a day or two. They will die off because they cannot take the oil. But anyhow, it was a sort of solution to keep them under control. Meanwhile, I was searching for another product. A product that needed to get rid of thrips and to leave the buds and the flowers behind because that what I, is what I wanted. That is what we want, I think I can say. We want to enjoy those beautiful flowers, right? So anyhow, I did uh, post again and then I did get one or two 
comments about this product that I will uh, uh, talk about more uh, in this video, of course, because this is uh, all we are uh, going to watch in work and uh, this product. But I did get, um, uh, uh, like I said, I think two comments about the ADU Lux, ADR Lux product. I did get uh, advices about other different brands as well. But I don't know how, but I, I go with my guts. I go with if something feels right or not. It wasn't based on anything, but just purely a feeling that I had with a certain brand. So I did start uh, searching for it. I can buy it fairly easily online. It's a bio product. It's uh, not a systemic. So we need to repeat uh, treatments. I'm willing to do it if it works. So I just bought this product. Uh, out of all the lists uh, of recommendations that I did get, I buy, bought this one and I couldn't believe what I saw because I did spray directly on my plants, on the thrips, and they just died off. They just stopped moving and I checked the other day, uh, the next day, and they were still there in exactly the same spot. So yeah, I, I knew enough, it, it, this product is working. But then, then I did watch my blooms because we wanted to uh, keep the blooms and keep enjoying the buds. Well, lo and behold, they do grow, they continue to grow, to flower, like nothing ever happened to them. So yeah, I thought, well, this is too good to be true. So uh, I'm not going to film it yet. I will wait uh, uh, a year or so. I'm going to try it over and over again because I need to be certain. I cannot say that this product will work for your plants, of course. I can only say my experience, share my experience, and I can say that it works for me. So keep that in mind. If you buy it, test it on one orchid and just see what happens. Anyhow, it worked wonders. So I thought, well, I'm going to make this video, but then I didn't have a, uh, a live uh, thrip because I thought I'm, I'm, I want to film this product in action that I can actually show you guys what, what is happening when you apply this product on a thrip. And finally it happened. I don't know if you saw, uh, it's about two weeks ago, I, uh, uh, my video on how to uh, recognize if you have pest problems or if your orchid is sick, how to determine what is happening with my orchids. I think that's the title. And somewhere halfway through, I said, well, I, I was talking about this product already a little bit. And I was saying, well, I need uh, thrips for this video and that I shouldn't say it out loud. Well, believe it or not, you guys, two days later, I found this bot on the floor, which I probably knocked out while watering. And lo and behold, there was a trip on it. So I did grab my camera and it was running around like it knew what was going to happen. So the filming is not as beautiful. Uh, it's a little bit shaky, let's, let's put it like that. So, uh, but everything is on camera and it's beautiful. You will see the uh, product in action. But before uh, we're going into that part of the video, I would like to come back to uh, what I said earlier. I was talking about the signs and that was the biggest thing that I, as a grower, needed to learn. What are the signs? When do we know something is off with our orchid and when do we know if we have to look in the corner of pests or in deficiencies or in um, a virus, etc. So I, the previous video, I hope that helped a little bit. Today I'm going to go into the details uh, more of signs if you have thrips and the damage they can leave behind. So uh, yeah, let's start this uh, little journey. The signs. For me, one of the most common signs is when you have these edges around your blooms. Those have been eaten by thrips, at least some parts. And inside of the bloom, you can see where thrips have been eaten on this uh, flower. So for me, those are the most common signs. And you can actually see here a teeny tiny spot. There is a little thrip. But I did spray it, so it will not be moving anymore. But there is something. And we also see some patches over here. So it's not sometimes it does look a little bit like a virus, but I had this one for years. It never had a virus or showing up in the blooms. And we just saw we have trips, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure this is damage, trip damage. 
So and this is from behind. I think you can even see it better. That it has really has been eaten on the structures there. And this is also a very big sign. Blooms, bloom spikes, buds that are not developing anymore. Blackening up, as you can see. I sprayed it so I could sort of save that last bloom on this Avenda. But yeah, this is uh, how it looks when it's fairly severe. When we have a quite a few <laughs> teeny tiny uh, thrips larvae, probably, eating your flowers in your buds. And then you get these strange discolorations again. And like I said, buds that do not develop. Black spots on your flower spikes. So yeah, this is absolutely an indication that, uh, of thrips, that you have thrips. And this is one of my dendrobiums. This flower is going over now. That's because it's just uh, the time to go over. But here, and luckily I was kind of in, in on time, but here you can see some damage on that spike as well. So I sprayed it and it continued to grow. And I just did get beautiful blooms out of it. But once again, luckily I was just in time to spray it. But then you always will have some damage on there. That will not go away. But luckily we could save this spike. But yeah, you can really see how this has been eaten on. Again, thrips. I am not 100% sure on, in this case, but it looks very similar. Because thrips can also even eat, start eating on your bulbs and also on the leaves. And then you get this type of discoloration as well. These patches on there. This could be trip damage. I'm not completely sure in this case, like I said. And also on this leaf here. But they can also damage your leaves and bulbs. So not necessarily only the buds and the flower spikes. But they can be basically everywhere and do damage. And then you have those new growths, new growing tips dying off. And those could all also be signs of thrips. Like in this case on this vanilla, you can see the growing tip is completely dried up. It's very close to my vendors that do have the thrips. Let me take it off, or at least you can see it. It's the other way around there. It's completely dried up, damaged, and then it starts rotting off. So yes, that uh, can be trips as well. So yeah, to make this even uh, quotation marks better, well, you can see the damage on here. I'm not completely sure if it were thrips. It had thrips, but it also had spider mites at some point. But anyhow, we have real severe deficient, of, uh, not deficiencies, um, signs on here. This one has really been under attack. These were from spider mites, I know for sure. But this, I think it's, it's strip damage. But yeah, like I said, to make it even more nicer is what can happen is that they, that they are not on the plant necessarily, but they might go for your roots as well. So if you have these strange growing roots with these darker spots on there, like on this Venda, yes, you guys, that can be trips as well there. It's absolutely crazy. So yeah, that's why every grower hates probably thrips the most of all the pests. I do know that mealybugs and scale will survive as well in potting mixtures on roots. But I think thrips are very, very hard to catch, in my opinion. So that's why I'm making this video, because I'm so happy about the product. But yeah, it's, it's such a shame. But she is still here, she's still yeah. here. So yeah, I know that's not pretty, but it's important. It's very important. So to avoid that as much as we can, uh, we need to know what to look for. So uh, I, I hope uh, that this uh, part of the video did help to at least to know what kind of damage they can do. And yes, they can uh, survive in the media, grow, uh, eating and, and growing on the roots. It's a very, very horrible. Lucky enough, in my case, most of the times, most pets, pests do not really like the inorganic media, but still they are in there. So, uh, but it's, e it's, it's a bit easier to flush. Uh, you can also use this product, the Ecolux, to flush. I will get over the measurements, but before I do it, just quickly, this is the oil-based solution that I uh, like to use. And I will link this video in the end of, the, of this, uh, this video, actually. But um, if you use it, 
Uh, your blooms might turn up looking something like uh, this over here. So you can see the real brown spotting on them. I'm surprised they are still uh, even here. I did spray them about uh, three, four days ago. Why did I use the oil uh, solution, you might ask? Well, good question. I just grabbed the, the wrong bottle. So it wasn't intentionally to, to spray on my beautiful Lacaste blooms for this video. It just happened. I was in a rush and I, I saw some signs, some eating on the blooms. Uh, and I thought, well, I need to spray it. And I just grabbed the wrong bottle. I have a, a sticker on it. It says oil based, so I know which product is in there. And still, I grabbed the wrong one. So, but yeah, anyhow, I thought, well, you know what? I can show it now in this video. This will happen to your blooms if you use an oil-based solution. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that. Anyhow, I did spray this one as well, my flat Clark here. And I just used, in this case, the right product, the Ecolux. And I will show some pictures, some close-up of this, also the uh, ingredients. Uh, so you can pause the video if you want to go into it or look it up on Google, of course. But you also see some uh, recommendations there of the um, how to apply it and how much product you need to use. It says on the uh, lid, on the uh, yeah, on the lid and the outside the packaging, I should say, it says that we need 50 milliliters of product on 10 liters of water. Well, first of all, I use RO water, but I don't have a sprayer that holds 10 uh, liters of water and probably it would be a little bit too much now because we are in spring and in winter, so I cannot apply it as, um, as drastic as I can do in spring and summer. I really can soak the whole greenhouse, which works wonders, but I cannot do it now because it's too cold. Anyhow, I have a sprayer of uh, five liters that holds five liters. So I just do the simple measurements and just take uh, the half strength of what they are, do recommend. So that would be 25 milliliters of the product going into the sprayer of five liter uh, of RO water. And it, holds, it, it also uh, holds a, a little measurements cup in here. I probably don't have it in here. No, I only have the, the actual bottle still in here. But that measurement cup is exactly 25 milliliters. So it's coming uh, in uh, very handy, I think. And I only use that for, like I said, for five liters of water. It's a little bit like milk. If you uh, take the product out, it looks like a milk. So this is what I use, you guys, and it works wonders. So I have, like I said, I have um, the product in action. And uh, let's go over that first so you can see that it really, really works. So somewhere is that thrip on here. It decided to go inside of the bloom where we barely can see it. It's on the tip there. I need to get it in frame. And there it is. I'm going to break up the bloom. I will be right back. And then it decided to come out and <laughs> go back in. Uh, there it is. So I'm going to spray it now soon. Let me, uh, here we go. You can see it on there. I just gave it a spray. I shouldn't be touching this with my hands. I know there it is on the table. I'm going to follow it for a while. Yeah, it stops moving already, as you can see. Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Whoops, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's so small. And the lights are not working very well, but you can see how quickly it stopped moving. And that is what we want in this case. There we go. See? Nothing anymore. And that is beautiful <laughs> in this case. Oi, they can be so mean to our plants. <laughs> they can really destroy everything. So yeah, finally, I have it on camera, the product in action. <laughs> Here we are again. It's about four days later. And I hope you can see the residue on my table. That is the actual dried up Edulux. 
and also the butt is starting to shrivel I will not touch it again with my uh, bare hands but we also can see a thrip the thrip <laughs> still laying there it's not moving anymore at all yes it's my sherry baby and the fragrance is fantastic anyhow uh, so we now know how much product uh, we need to use and that it works, but how to actually apply it. Well, uh, we also know that thrips are, can get basically everywhere. So you need to be as furly as you can. You need to put out as much of that water on your plants. Uh, it needs to come everywhere to, uh, because it needs to be in contact with the eggs or the larvae or the adult thrips to uh, work. So I really, really soak my plants a little bit uh, like this Venda. So I think this is about a week, maybe two weeks later. I'm not completely sure. I did this uh, video in part because I wanted to capture a lot of things. But anyhow, this is the vanna we just saw that is very uh, fairly sprayed. I already touched it. I should use my, uh, my gloves. I didn't do it. But um, we can see that still the blooms are on there and they are really starting to progress. Even though we have some... Um, Remindings of the thrips, they are damaged here and there, but these buds over here, I'm not sure if you can see it, it's a bit heavy, it's a watering day for my van this, uh, today, but um, we have some beautiful buds over here that look very clean, and I hope you can see this growth here. Let me uh, zoom in a little bit. So yeah, I think this is a little bit more easier to see, but you can hopefully see that this is still growing even though you see a lot of browning over there. So there were definitely a, quite a lot of thrips, quite a lot of larvae. But it seems that I was just in time. Well, actually, it was just a little bit too late because a lot of damage had been done, but it's not dying off. So that is the point that I'm trying to make here. If you use the product and let's move the camera a little bit over to this spike so you can see it's a little bit more clear and it's just opening up this is what it does normally it takes a while to get those blooms a little bit bigger plus i need to mention that it's winter now so it's cold and i normally i don't have much light so my vendors don't really do like this uh, this time of year but still it's blooming and like i said i wanted to make the point that we can use this product and the blooms will stay on there. Let me turn this around a little bit, so hopefully you can see that but Oops, as well. I hope I didn't make too much noise. It's over here. I think you can see it. I hope you can. There you go. There are the buds. And those look way better than the other ones. So anyhow, that is how I do apply it. Now we need to discuss how often you need to use this uh, product. So yeah, like I said, we now need to know how often we need to use this product to get the best out of it. Well, um, then we need to kind of understand the life cycle of a thrip in this case. So we start with an uh, a egg, then we do get a larvae, and then we have an adult. And it's a lifespan about three weeks, or this cycle I just mentioned is about three weeks. Uh, if I'm correct, maybe a little bit longer, a bit shorter, but it's about three weeks. And so that means that we need to apply this product uh, more often. Because like I mentioned earlier on, it's, a, it's not a systemic. It needs to be in contact with the actual pest. So therefore, I use the following treatment. I start spraying it and exactly seven days later, I spray it again. And then seven days later, I spray it again. And just to be sure to cover those three weeks, I spray it again uh, after seven days. So four times. And in between the gaps, in between a spraying are exactly seven days every single time. And that should cover the cycle. So you stop uh, getting a larvae 
and you stop the uh, adult uh, adult uh, thrips making eggs and uh, start creating new uh, life again because we need to cut that cycle to get rid of the, the thrips and that works wonders for me that cycle works wonders and like i said my blooms and my uh, spikes can take that cycle it, it, don't, it doesn't matter them uh, like nothing ever happened to them which is wonderful of course and the thrips are gone so yes you guys it was quite a, a quite a topic i think but very important it took me quite a while to make this video because i have all these bits and pieces that i wanted to put together but i also want to mention that i can find this uh, product uh, very easily in the netherlands I think you can find this product in Europe uh, fairly easily as well. I have the link in my video description. But uh, what I wanted to ask if you are from, let's say, the US or uh, maybe from the UK, because you cannot get it shipped over there, or from a different uh, other part of the world, Japan, China, Africa, something like that, and you cannot find this exact uh, product, but maybe you have something that works very similar please leave it in the comment section below because I really want to share this with as much people as I can because it's such a, a important subject to talk about. And uh, I think one day at least there will be um, uh, the first start of this journey where we get your first pests on your plants if you didn't already have them. But anyhow, you, yeah, you cannot avoid it. You will come across pests. And all the other ones, the mealy box, the scale, really hate this product as well. And also the spider mites, but I do find that the spider mites are not that affected by it somehow. I'm not completely sure why, but uh, so I still use the oil-based solution for the spider mites on my melatonin abscesses, and that works wonders. But if they are in flower and they have spider mites, I just use the oil-based on the plant itself. And in the pot, I use the Aerial Lux plus on the flower spike. So I try to uh, work around the oil and the effects that it has on the blooms and the buds. So yes, you guys, uh, I think I covered all for now. Please uh, leave your experience in the comments like I uh, asked before. Thank you so much, for, so much for watching. And if you want, please share this video. Uh, like I said, it would be nice to reach as much people as you can because this is a very hard subject and I never found a product that works so, so good for my plants. So that's uh, what I uh, like to share. I uh, did, do not get paid for it. Not yet, anyhow. <laughs> but yeah, it's really based on my own experience. So uh, thank you for sharing. Thank you for the thumbs up. And of course, thank you for subscribing to my channel. And I really, really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.